Okay, again, some of the things we talked about um, last class was uh, putting the guidelines on. So these are guidelines. And I put the guidelines at a, a half inch. So a little bit of a half inch there. And then I have a half inch in the middle here. And that's just like a yeah, half inch over here. And so as I put my, um, the nice things about guidelines as well is that you can um, snap things to them so that things are perfectly aligned. So in the program, it has the ability to, as you're moving things around, it will, the term is snap, where it'll perfectly align to the edge of something. And so um, if you want to get rid of a guideline, like I'm done with this one, I was using it to line this up here, but I probably don't really need it right now. I can just select it like any other object, and you hit the delete key on the keyboard, and it'll go away. So guidelines, as well as you can lock guidelines so that you don't accidentally move them. A lot of the options for guidelines and things like that are underneath view, guides, and you'll see there's guides where you can, like I said, lock guides so that, let's say you're sharing a document with somebody, you know, because a lot of companies will have templates. I worked at companies and I used to have to deal with templates and, of course, design um, guidelines. In fact, I used to work, do a lot of work for Westinghouse. It's a big, huge corporation. They had a book that was like this thick of all their, you know, what size their logo is, you know, where the placement of the logo needs to be. And here at West Valley, we have guidelines for how to use the West Valley logo and all that stuff. So, I mean, you might, you know, if you're making a template for somebody, you can lock the guidelines. You can clear all the guidelines, hide guidelines. And so those options are underneath view, as well as the rulers. We talked about adding the rulers. Last class, you can see where the rulers are located here, where you can show rulers, hide rulers, and so on. To change the measurement of the rulers is actually in the preferences, is underneath. Uh, so right now it's in inches, but the, the default setting inside of Illustrator a lot of times is points because of the way they measure fonts and points. So you can adjust those options underneath the units option under Illustrator preference units where you can adjust a general setting here. The default is usually points. And if you hit that, you'll notice the rulers now are in points. And if you don't know what a point is or how to measure it, that's kind of confusing. So if your rulers are not in the measurement you want, again, you can go underneath Illustrator Preferences Units, and you can convert it to where we want inches, at least in this case, since we're using 11 by 17, or also referred to as tabloid. Okay, let's bring in some images for uh, our piece, and we're going to randomly place them. Then we'll put some columns of text in there, and then we can move things around. So once you start putting things on, it's easy enough to move them around. Some of the things you might want to do is maybe start working on managing your layers. And inside layers right now, we have a whole bunch of stuff in layer one. Um, we can click on that and maybe just call it um, top. How about that top um, design? Or header, it would be header at the top, right? Header. And that's kind of all the pieces that we put up here. Okay, and we can actually lock that so that we don't mess with it. Because our top is the way we want it. Let's make a layer, let's leave it there so we don't have to deal with trying to select things, right? Everything's locked in there. Even the guidelines are locked in there too. So the guidelines are part of there. And I'm gonna make a new layer for the rest of my stuff and we'll call that the content or body or whatever you want to be and that'll be all the stuff that goes down here down below okay, let's talk about finding artwork of course um, last class we kind of talked briefly about um, where to find art um, great place to find samples would be the museum website go to the New York Metropolitan they're gonna have images of all the famous artwork out there uh, you can go to the, the Washington DC National Gallery they have images on their website you can download um, of course Google you can steal from Google uh, I know we're doing this for commercial or for, for not commercial we're students and we can steal but of course if I was doing this and putting it on a billboard and going down 101 uh, you'd have to get permission to use all kinds of art right we'll talk a little bit of copyright a little bit later in the semester towards the end and then how to copyright your stuff but right now we're still stealing so um, in this case, uh, we want to type in Toulouse-Lautrec. Uh, we can go and s type in his name. Where is my browser? Toulouse-Lautrec. 
Toulouse. No, oh, not winery. And of course, we want quality images. Try and find a higher resolution because when you print things out, I mean, it might look okay in one on your screen, but once it gets to the printer and prints it out, it could be kind of blurry and ugly. So it's best to start with uh, higher quality images. If you go into the image option inside of Google, you can go to where it says tools and go to size. I think I showed you this last class and underneath there you can go to large sizes here. If you want super size, you can go to four megapixels and find out if I can get anything super size. There we go. So most of these are going to be high resolution. As you roll your mouse over, you can see the pixel dimensions as you roll the mouse over. So you're looking for images that have um, a lot, especially when you're doing your image trace as well, you want to try and find something that has a lot of pixels in it because it's converting the pixels into objects and the more resolution you have, the better the objects will be. So we can find some famous uh, pieces. This is probably the most famous poster of him right here. And uh, um, we can save that. I'm just going to right click and save image as. And I'm going to put it on my desktop because I'm messy and me and Jean fight over space on the desktop all the time. There we go. Well, I just leave it there for her. Um, this one's another famous one. Of course, we can save that on desktop as well. Um, this is um, table. And then uh, let me get at least three or four. Uh, we love the dancing one. I think I, I have, oh, this is a famous one as well. And Jaja Gabor played uh, this character in um, in the movie. If you ever seen the movie, she recently passed away, didn't she? I think so. Uh, of course, these are famous posters. Um, maybe we can get another poster. And so I got two posters. And of course, if you don't know the printing techniques that he was using um, with, for the posters, he was using lithography, um, lithograph, where you draw on a, on a stone and then use acid to etch away and then put ink on top. Kind of pioneered um, using color for that. Uh, let's find a unique one that no, most people don't know. Let's find one. This one's kind of unique. Um, this one's kind of big. That's a nice poster. Um, no. uh, we'll just get some more basic ones. Um, uh, we got to get the brothel one, one of those. There we go. Whatever. So I have some images. To bring the images into, um, oh, yes, give me my space. To bring them into my design, you can use the place option. One of the nice things about using the place option is you can control the size of it on the screen. If you copy and paste, let's say you go from a website and you hit copy, and then you go to Illustrator and paste, it's going to paste it whatever size you copied it, so it might be really big and so on. But if you use the file place option inside of Illustrator. You can choose your art that you want. Um, if I could, can I do a couple of them? Oh, we'll start with the poster. And if I hit place, you'll notice the cursor changes to a, a box and it shows you a thumbnail of the art. And you can then go and um, draw where you want it. Now, of course, I don't want it to take up the whole column. I'm going to only have it take up maybe um, almost a little more than half. And the reason why is I'm going to have the text running along, and when it gets down here, it'll kind of run here and so on. So I'm not going to use it for the whole space. In fact, I might even make it a little smaller. Um, one of the things that you don't want to do is have text that's running really, really, really tight here. It makes it hard to read, right, because it is running really tight there. So, you know, try and keep it so I might even make it a little smaller. There we go. And one of the things about Illustrator is that, you know, trying to put um, an image on the screen like this is it really doesn't have a frame. It doesn't really have a frame. So 
So sometimes if I wanted to give my um, photo a frame, I would just use a rectangle tool and use a stroke with no fill and put the tip over top of it. And then you can give it you know, a line around it. Or you can leave it like this if you would like. Another way is I'm going to place again uh, another piece. Let me get another one in there. And uh, again, I might make this all the way towards the bottom. And maybe move that up a little bit so we can um, let's place another one. And maybe move it around. I don't know. Just trying to line things up as best I can, but that, that gets kind of boring now. So we're going to move them around. Don't worry. We're going to put them in there, put our text in there, and then move things around. And I thought I had one more. Did I not have one more? I thought I saved four. Oh, this one. In fact, let's switch these around. Let's put this one up here. Put this one down here. Something like that. This is well. We'll make we'll make mistakes. It's good to make mistakes in my phone. There's a lot of mistakes already there. I can see it already. As far as alignment and things like that, things are just it looks randomly thrown in there, right? It's okay. We'll fix it. Okay, so we have our art that we wanted to put in our piece, and uh, let's steal some text. Now I know, um, I think you should write your own text so that you make it personal, right? You don't want to just go to Wikipedia and steal the text, do you? No, I don't. I'm going to go to Wikipedia and steal the text. And so uh, I'm going to steal some text. I'm going to kind of put it in Word first so I can alter it a little bit. Um, actually, let me steal all this down here. Here we go. I'm going to steal all this text here. And let me put it in Word so I can clean it up a little bit. So what I want to do is pretty much get rid of all the formatting. Okay, so in order to get rid of the formatting, uh, I'm going to paste it in Word first with no formatting and then go from Word to Illustrator. One of the problems with pasting right into Illustrator is you don't have this paste special option that you have and sometimes formatting and other things will come over to Illustrator. So one of the ways if I'm going to steal some text is I might put it in Word first by going under Edit, Paste Special inside of Word and then I'm going to unformat the text okay, in Word and unformat the text and then it gives you kind of raw. Now it still has maybe paragraph options, but I want to get rid of all the um, some things in there. You know, this is not what I need there. Might get rid of. Actually, I might leave some of the paragraph there, but I'm going to get rid of some of the extra spacing like that. Um, and so there, that looks okay. And so just cleaning it up. I might. I'm going to leave the paragraphs there. That's fine. But it's it's kind of the you know the little things like this, the reference reference things I want to get rid of. The paragraphs are okay. That looks that looks clean. Okay, so then I can copy from here into um, right into Illustrator. To do that I can select all by hitting Command A of course on the keyboard like you would select all inside of Illustrator. Hit Command C to copy um, your text. Go back to uh, Illustrator. Now I'm going to put my text in. Now to put the text in I'm going to use a column of text. To make the column of text I'm going to use the text tool and I'm going to draw a box. And so let me zoom in just briefly here and then 
I'll move it around here so we're kind of working right there. So I'm going to use the text tool and if you hold your mouse down, we're not doing area type. That's if you wanted to put it in an object. We're not using that. You're just using the plain text tool. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I put my cursor on the guide. Notice how it's locking to the guide right there, very nicely locking to the guide. And I'm going to click with my mouse and hold the mouse down and I'm going to drag and it's going to drag a box out and I'm going to have a column of text here right there and I know it's default whatever it is 12 point whatever that's okay we're gonna adjust it later and you can see my cursor flashing there it's flashing 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 after I made my column of text and then I'm gonna paste again you have an option say edit paste and they just have paste in front paste in back paste in place paste all artboards there's no like paste special and then of course they have just plain paste but of course I've already done some um, formatting already so I'm gonna just hit paste and it puts my text in. Of course, I haven't told it to wrap around the image yet. I haven't changed the size of it yet. I haven't done any formatting, but the text is in there. Could you type the text directly right there? Sure, there? you can type the text in right inside there. And headings, part, if you had headings in the original document, would you copy the headings in, or would you put the headings in later? What do you mean by headings? What do you mean, what do you mean by headings? Uh, early youth, uh, military service, blah, blah, blah. Headings in the beginning of, the, of a section of text. Yeah, I'd probably put that separately. Maybe not. I would. I would make a template that would have the headings as separate object okay. in the text because it would be different formatted, most likely color, maybe size, and things like that. Gotcha. Yeah. If you're doing anything that's more than one or two pages, most likely it's better to do it in your writing anyway. <laughs> okay. So if you can do something that's more than one page, it's very similar putting the text boxes yeah. in. We will do something that has two pages, though. We will do, uh, uh, we did the wire card that has two artboards, and put something back in the same document. But anything that has pretty pretty much pages, I would use InDesign. Okay, so let's format this. Right now it doesn't fit, okay, and it's kind of, it's hard to read. It's a little small font, so we're going to adjust the font and things like that. Now, again, if you want to adjust the font without selecting the text, I think I demonstrated this last class, is that if you use the selection tool and select the entire box, which it is already selected right there, you can then go and make your adjustments here without having to use the text tool to select all the text. You know what I mean? I think I demonstrated that with the title last time. So again, if I use the, the selection tool, select the entire text, I can come over here and I can adjust the font. Now keep in mind when you are changing fonts that uh, sans serif fonts are going to have a larger X height than um, serif fonts. And I know I don't teach, Eugene teaches a whole typography class, but um, in this case, uh, you have your two special fonts. You got your serif font and your sans serif font. And um, serif font would be times, and sans serif would be something like Arial. By default, there is a space called X height, which is the baseline of the font, is down here. It's called baseline. Line. Okay, so the sans serif font, and the, the term x height it refers to the size of a lowercase x, the size of a lowercase x, and by the I know this is by default a sans serif font is larger than a serif font, and so let's just we'll go do a little we're gonna go do a little test right now. So right now we have a serif font in here. Right, this is a serif font. If I zoom in, you can see it doesn't have little handles. When we say serif font, it's like times. It has little handles. And the, the reason why we use those little handles is for reading. Most books and things that are published on, you know, published um, that you want to read are done using a serif font because those little handles that are on there, like in times, helps your eye flow across the page. That's what it's for. It's helping your eye. It relieves fatigue. If you're reading a book in serif, oh, you're going to get tired very quickly. Okay, so most published things, books and things that are in a, in a serif font, you know, those little handles help your eyes go across. Where, of course, headlines and things like that, a lot of times bold things are going to be in sans serif font. But right now, this is a sans serif font. If we zoom in, you'll notice it doesn't have any wonderful little handles. It just has... Um, beautiful little whatever. Now again I just told you sans serif font usually is larger 
than serif font. So right now, if I change this to times, look look at how the text comes all the way down and goes over top of this image right here, right? If I come over here, I'm not going to change the size, not changing the point size. If I just come over here and put times in here, if I can find times 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 and just to do the plain times regular times and I hit times notice how it got a little smaller and moved up a little bit right not not very much but a little bit so it, it is in general a little smaller there's a lot of big um like um verdana is a very big sans serif font w w watch what if I go to verdana look how look how much space it takes up now okay it whoosh takes up a lot of space so in general the sans serif fonts are going to take up more space than a serif font. And I always tell my, uh, my comp I teach an a intro to computer class and they have to write papers. And I, and I show them how to do that. And I go, oh, your English teacher is going to say you need at least eight pages. Make it a sans serif font. You're going to have more <laughs> space. you have more and more pages. In addition, of course, uh, we have our f font size right here, of course, 12 point. Now, you're, you're not limited to what's in this list here. If I click here, you'll notice it says 11, 12, 14, 18, and of course, 72 at the very bottom is how big? One inch. One inch, okay? That'll be on the test, if we had a test. But you don't not limited to what's in here. You can type in anything. In fact, you can put in half a point size. Let's say I wanted to do 13.5. I can type in 13.5 in this box. Oops, sorry. I got something else in there. 13.5 and then hit tab and it will be 13.5. So you can use decimal points for sizing your font. You can use decimal points. Okay? In addition, you'll notice this is automatically being generated is the line spacing. And Illustrator does a pretty good job, but if you're using really big fonts like this one, it's kind of nice to have a little bit more space in the letting or line spacing. And so uh, instead of using auto, um, you can put a number in the line spacing here. And, um, you know, that's kind of the right on the board. So I can actually come over here, and, and right now this is kind of, you know, it's a big font. You know, having more space between it would really add it. So I'm probably going to go, if I go 13.5, uh, maybe 18, hit tab. That looks a little bit better. There's, there's starting some spacing issues here, maybe. I'm not really sure. It's, uh, it's, I don't like this font is the problem. Verdana is just so big and ugly. Um, let me find something that's a little nicer. Um, try and find something that's readable. Remember, um, we're, we're, this is a poster. You want somebody to read this, right? You want them to see how great you can write, hopefully. And, and so think about that. Um, this is a little bit better. I don't like city fonts, but Tacoma <laughs> is a city font. We did talk about kerning last class, right? <laughs> Right, that's between two characters, and this is between all the characters. Ten, try not to do that. Right now, you'll notice that the text is r left align, ragged right. Again, the word ragged means it's not even over here because it's going there. And all a lot of these options to adjust the the hyphenation. You can see it's hyphenated right here, and some of you might not like that. You know, the hyphenation is kind of um, you know hard to read sometimes. You know, the bell. Belgian critic, you know, it's gonna be crazy. So, how do I adjust these? So, a lot of this is gonna be in the paragraph pop up window. There's actually a window called paragraph. Right now, we're in the character window right here. See how it says character? If you go to the paragraph pop up window, and it's another pop up window here, it's called paragraph. This is where you're gonna adjust the hyphenation and the ragged right and things like that. To do that, right now, the first option again is ragged right. Um, flush left, ragged right. This would be center aligned, which of course that's hard to read. Why is it hard to read? Well, because you know your eye is going across. You want it to line up here very nicely. And so as your eye is reading, 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 you want to boom, come over here. This kind of jaggingness on that side is hard. Right? It's really hard to read on line like that too. Whoosh. And of course it's hard to read this because again it's ragged right aligned, ragged left.
They do have justify options are here. This is the justify option where the, the last last line in a paragraph is on its own. Um, I don't know if I, we see that. It just doesn't seem to be working right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why it's not. Usually this, oh yeah, here it is. See the last uh, line of the paragraph is here. Uh, justify again. Um, sometimes you get extra space in the middle. This turned out okay. Uh, this is justify with the last line in a paragraph in the center. Justify with the last line in a paragraph on the right. And then this is justify with everything aligned. Okay, justify means the text is spread out so it fits the column. I tend to not do justify. I tend to use this the most just because it's the most common. In addition, you have indentation down here. Now, this indents the entire thing, but we don't want to indent the entire thing. We want to kind of, let's follow the MLA format, right? The MLA format indents the first line of the paragraph at a half an inch. Uh, well, there's no inches here. We got points here. So um, this is the first line right here. You can actually eyeball it here. If I hit the little arrow that goes up, watch the W right here. As I hit it, watch this W. This is the first line of a paragraph. If I click this option right here, it'll start putting the first line of the paragraph. Okay, so wherever there's a paragraph break, this would be a paragraph break, you can then do the first line here. Uh, it's probably 17 is a little big. I might match it to the size of the font itself. So my font was 13 point something. Actually, this is that looks pretty good. So maybe that's fine. I don't have a good rule for that. What would 13 be? Uh, something like that. 14. That looks okay. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. Uh, this is to turn it off if you have a document um, a space before the paragraph, um, a space after the paragraph, and then here's hyphenation. If you want to turn a hyphenation off, you just check the box. But that's not always the best. Maybe you just want to adjust so that it's only really long words that do hyphenation. And not, you know, maybe with this one. So what you can do in the hyphenation is you can adjust how many letters before it does the hyphenation. So there is a pop-up window for that inside the paragraph window here. Inside the paragraph window, if we go to the very upper right corner here and I click on there, you'll notice there is a hyphenation option right here. Again, in the upper right corner of the paragraph window, if you go here to hyphenation, you can then go and adjust. And it says hyphenate words that are longer than six letters. So if you really want big words, you can say oh, 8 or 9 or something like that. Uh, you can preview that too and see what it does. You can conform it so it doesn't hyphenate um, small words, I guess what I'm trying to say, after the first two letters. You can say maybe only four letters and then hit tab for that. And so you can control the hyphenation is what I'm trying to say. After you've hyphenation, can you do right justification? Right justification. What do you mean by that? Uh, the right justification. The right uh, end of the line is all aligned. This one? Yeah, that. All aligned, this one? Yeah. I guess so. Works. Yeah. Okay, so let's zoom out and see where we're at. Uh-oh. Well, the first thing you'll notice at the very bottom is I have a little red X down here. That red X is telling me, hey, you have more text than fits in this column. Notice how the text kind of just runs out there. So how do we make our second column? Well, we make our second column by clicking that red X and then going up to where we wanted to start and then clicking. So here, watch how I make the second column. Again, to make my second column of text, I go to where that red X is down here with the um, black arrow. I'm still using the basic selection tool, this black one right here, basic selection tool. And I click on it, oh, try and get it right. And the cursor should change to, and you'll notice the cursor changes to a little, um, I don't know, this kind of cursor. Looks like there's some text in there. And I'm going to kind of line it up. Notice how it lines up to my guideline as well as it lines up to the top of my other. And I'm going to click my mark cursor, and it'll put the other one, and it'll make the column exactly the same size. You notice how it goes all the way down to here and makes the second column exactly the same as the first one. Let's wrap the text around our pictures and then our initial letter and so on. Okay, so next I'm going to wrap my text around my pictures. Uh, I'm going to select all this stuff 
all of it. So both columns as well as the images themselves and I'm going to go underneath object, text wrap, make, and it's say hey, you're going to wrap it around, sure, and it didn't work. What did I do wrong? The images should be on top. So let's undo that. So again, I'm going to go to my layers. In my layers. And I'm going to drag my images above my text. Then I'm going to make sure everything is selected, everything is selected again. Remember, you can move things around inside the layer window. I just drag the images above. Now I'm going to go underneath Object, Text Wrap, Make. And it'll say, yeah, yeah, you want to wrap? Sure. Boom, and it wraps the text around. Again, some of the problems you may run into is, uh, you know, when you get some really tight here, maybe. Other problems you run into is the alignment at the top. It's kind of, you know, this is a little awkward maybe. Um, there's a space that's around the, the extra space here. So a lot of times when you do these text wrapping, you need to go in and move things around and adjust them. If you want to be able to adjust the space that's wrapping around the picture, you can do that inside of the um, inside of the option there under text wrap, they have text wrap options. And if you go into the text wrap options, you can actually adjust this offset. This is the space that's around the outside. So you can see there's like a little line right here, right? There's like a little line that goes around the outside here uh, between the space. Oh, I can't zoom in. But if I hit the up arrow, you can see oh, nothing's changing. Okay, I lied then. Um, Maybe you need to select the picture. Let me see. Select the picture. Object, text wrap, text wrapped options. Let me see. Oh, let me see. I don't know how to adjust that text. Maybe I'm not hitting the preview. Ah, oh, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, you can adjust. Maybe I wasn't hitting the preview. So, that's the space it's around. It's under the text wrapped options. And I'm going to hit cancel, just so you know it. Okay, so now you can actually move your images around with the wrapping still going on. So like this one, I'm going to move it up a little bit so the top of the line here aligns with the top of the, the, um, top of the image here. So again, I'm just going to kind of move it up a little bit so that the alignment here is I'm trying to align the top of the text with the top of the poster. Things are lined up. I mean, you can zoom in here. You know, having things lined up is really nice, okay? So things look like, um, you know, your eye wants to have, you know, alignment. It wants your... The other problem you run into a lot is extra space at the bottom. Sometimes you have to move it down or up. Um, this one, again, I might move it up or down. If I move it up a little bit to line up with the top, that might look a little better. But of course, I got this big empty white space that's down here. Maybe I move it down a little bit like that. But then it starts wrapping a little funny. This top first paragraph came from over on the other side. Maybe I move it up a little bit. I'll move it up. But I'm going to have to adjust this stuff anyways because here's another problem I have is, look, I have a little plus at the end here. I didn't have too much text for both columns. And of course, I'm not going to make another poster. What could I do? Well, of course, let, let's do that first. I'm going to select both columns so that both columns are selected. Select both columns and then go to my um, text here. Maybe change the, either the size of my font. I remember it's 13. Let's go to 13 instead of 13.5 and see. Okay, let's see what we got over here now. Okay, it fits now. Okay, so now my text fits. So just going down there, or of course you can change the line spacing to get your font to fit as well. But now, of course, I, I have more problems, so we can move things around even some more. Uh, again, lining things up is rather important. The top still looks good here. Um, this is a little bit better, but it's a little awkward. I might move this way up here a little bit and let it wrap a little bit more down there. You move it up a little more. Did you move it all the way to the left margin? Is it tech? Text grabber on the other side. This way? Yeah.
That's actually better. You're right. Very nice. Thank you. And then this one I might move around. Maybe I line this with the top of the other one right here. There we go. And then this one is starting to look better now. Line this with the bottom of the last line there. Um, of course, it's not very good to have a one word at the very bottom here. Sometimes it's kind of awkward there. So um, might need to move that around a little bit. Don't like that. Don't like that. That's better. Okay. I don't know. You you got to kind of think and see how things line up. It would be nice if the bottom of this one's lined up with the bottom of that one. So there's a nice line. If you need to put a guideline in there, put your cursor in the in the ruler, drag down. Let's put a guideline in there. Make sure things are just perfectly lined up. Perfectly lined up. So maybe you can use the arrow key on the keyboard to move things around a little bit. Can you rotate the, 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 uh, the pictures around? Uh, you can rotate a picture around, sure, and uh, um, you got you got your whole rotate tool right there, your lovely rotate tool, and the text will wrap around there. Try to avoid things like this, though. Okay, and a lot of common mistakes that students do is putting text that um, kind of runs around a picture. So try to avoid having an image that is so big. Let me make this big here. Um, that you're reading, 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 and then boom, you have to go down here and read, 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 read. Okay, so try and avoid doing something like this. Um, it's really hard to read, 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 and then you have to jump all the way down here to read, 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 read. Okay. When you have your text box selected, there's a little handle in the middle where it's red, and it says double click to go to... Hold on, let me make this smaller again. I didn't want that. Hold on, I need to make my thing perfect again. That's a little better. Okay, what are you asking now? Uh huh. And then the red handle up is in the middle on the right hand side. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to? What is that? I have no idea. It's a good question. I don't know what that is. Oops, I, I don't know what it did. Type conversion, undo type conversion. I don't know what that does. I'll have to think about it or investigate. It's new to me. Okay, let's type uh, initial letter at the beginning of our text up here. Okay, so again, um, you might want to try an initial letter. I don't think that's a necessarily requirement for this project. Okay. So don't think you have to do it. But it kind of makes it nice at the beginning of an article if there is an initial letter. Um, you might want to make a, a letter that is separate instead of part of the document because once you start changing sizes, it starts messing up the line spacing and everything else. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is I want to make a big D here somewhere. Right now, of course, it's indented. And if I don't want it indented, how can I not indent that first line? Well, in the um, paragraph option, uh, there is a way to um, select the one line. And I'm going to go actually to the text tool to do fine tuning. I believe to do fine tuning, you don't want to have the whole thing selected, but you can actually use the text tool. So I can select that one line and then do some adjustments. And it'll still keep. Notice how my paragraph down here is still indented here. See it? Okay, so if you're going to do fine tuning of a line, use the text tool and not select the entire box. Okay? Again, if you wanted an initial letter, you know, you could just select the first line and make it super big. And let's see what it does. Let's make it 36. Uh oh. You see what happened already? I'm getting some extra spaces there. And I can give it a color. But let's look at what happened. And of course, oh, I hate when I do that. Working with, uh, uh, I'm so used to hitting the space bar to get a handle to move the window around. It doesn't work very well when you have the text tool selected, the space bar. 
So um, again, you can choose a, a different font is usually nice for an initial letter, maybe something that's very fancy kind of font, maybe something um, that's a little bit different. Um, and you know, a lot of the initial letters are scripty kind of things and very elaborate. Uh, oh, I hate this one. Don't I hate brush fonts? Yeah. D minus for everybody who uses a brush font. Ooh, look at this some dripping marks. Angry Birds. There we go. Okay, that looks kind of interesting. Angry Birds. Okay. Can you make it go down below the? Line? Yeah, we're gonna talk about adjustment. So here, here's the problem that you run into, of course. Now nothing is aligned properly. So what is the problem? Well, of course, when I first put my paragraph on this side over here, mm -hmm. it was aligned with the top of this one. So everything was nice and beautifully aligned. But now everything's messed up. Because look, the bottom of this line doesn't line up with the bottom of these lines over here now. And that's because I adjusted the size of this one. So you know, there's a lot of problems with just trying to do that. where. Uh, uh, Another way might be just to, like I said, you could make this a separate object. If it's a poster like this and it's not something that has text running from page to page, you can kind of fake it a little bit by making a separate thing. But if it's something like InDesign and you're making something that's a book and it has many, many pages and you're trying to do initial letters in, in each page, that would be you know, too hard to do by um, making it a separate text. But again, one way to be would be to cut that out of there. Boom, go back to normal. Cut it out of there. Make yourself a, a new thing of text. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Just click over here somewhere. Put your letter in there. Go on, zoom in a little bit here. Take my letter and kind of jam it in the beginning here. And then, do you think you can wrap text around another thing of text? What do you guys think? Yes. Let's try it. So let's try and see if we can wrap our text around this text. I'm going to select both the, the text and my initial letter. And we're going to go under Object, Text Wrap, Make. Now let's see. It worked. OK, so now, of course, there's some issues with spacing. We could go underneath our, um, this is where we can go under our text wrap, text wrap options, and of course reduce, um, oh, preview, thank you for that preview option. Reduce this a little bit. There we go. That looks like a little better, right? Yeah. Okay, so you can, oh, say okay, you can wrap your text around your thing. A lot of times it might be nicer to actually have the initial letter above, so it lines up at the bottom like that. Um, so that might look a little more interesting as well, um, and so on. So, you know, you might want to try an initial letter, putting a bigger one there. Maybe look at some initial letters uh, or integrate them into there. Uh, maybe put an initial letter on at the beginning of every paragraph. Maybe each, each one of these at the beginning of each paragraph is a little bold or different color or something. I don't know. That's the, the possibilities are up to you. Try not to use too many different fonts. Some of the problems you'll see right now is I use some crazy font here, and then I use a different font here. This looks kind of awkward having one font here and a different font here. And it's okay to have a different font in your title and maybe in the date kind of thing like that. You know, this kind of thing relates. But I would probably go and adjust this font to be more like this font or... Because this is much more readable than this up here, but um, it just looks funny having two different fonts here. So try and avoid using too many different fonts. Um, look about wrapping your text around there. Try and um, avoid having little text at the very bottom all by itself right here. And then you say, well, how do I get rid of that? Oh, it's not very. It's not that easy. You know, moving things around. You might need to adjust some space. Maybe make this a little bigger. That looks better. Just by adjusting that just a little bit. Did you see that? Now it fixed that little ga gallery all by itself there. Okay, you don't want to have one line at the bottom all by itself. 
Uh, the big space at the top here now, I might need to move that up so that lines up nicely with the top of the text there. Now I messed up the alignment between here and here. Maybe I have to make this a little bigger. It's going to take a lot of time and effort to make things line up, but the most important thing is to line things up. The last thing I'll demonstrate, of course, would put some objects around the outside, and then we'll do a little bit of um, decoration. So to make it really pretty, um, if that's a word, pretty, um, some things would be to add a add a stroke around there. So if I use a rectangle tool and I give my rectangle, I'm going to deselect whatever selected. I'm going to go to my rectangle tool and I'm going to get a little black stroke here. Maybe make it a little thicker, like two points, and maybe just draw it around my... This is the easiest way to give my thing a frame that I have found. And of course giving it a little frame like that might make it stand out a little better so that the art is not bleeding off into the white background there. Again, this is kind of floating here. Oh, I'm going to move that up a little bit to make that a little better. There we go. Ooh. Ah. Struggling with this one. And then, of course, give ourselves a little black um, line around here. Uh-oh, what happened to my black line? That was two points, right? There we go. Okay, so black line there. This has some extra white space around it anyways. Um, little black line around there. Black line around there. Okay, so that's fun. Okay, let's talk about um, some decorations. So uh, you might want to add, you know, a decoration around the outside of your um, document. What are decorations? Well, if you go underneath window and you go to your... Um, um, my options or my decorations are underneath um, uh, not symbols brush library decorative decorative banners and seals decorative scatter decorative text dividers elegant curls and floral brushes so you have all these things that you know kind of are at least from this time frame you know if you've thought about you know Paris and the late 1800s early 1900s very decorative so you know adding some decorative floral or something to the edge of my object might be interesting uh, how you can add these using the brush library uh, under decorative is you can actually add it as a stroke so if I go and um, say I, I put myself with a rectangle that goes around my whole art here then I can actually apply a brush to that. Um, here's some default ones right here. Um, we're gonna go and bring that up, whatever it's called. What did I just say? Graphic brush library, decorative, and let's bring in um, elegant curls and brush floral set. Well, there we go. Let's try that. There we go. Um, and then we could. Um, go here and is there a way I can bring that in here oh I think I just click on this let me see um, there you go well it only did it one side but it did put a brush around and you, it only did one side here um, let's see uh, that doesn't look very good either um, how about this we delete that but you might want to see if you can make some edges. I'm just pointing it out. Oh, there's some other ones down here that might wrap easier around with um, some decorative things. This doesn't look like it did anything. Uh, how about some cities that go around? There we go, the city one. <laughs> there we go. I don't know what this is. Oh, there's some people going around. How about that? I don't know. Some of them work here, others. And this was just applying... Uh, a stroke so this is a rectangle that has a stroke and I went into the brush floral and things like that to add that um, I'm not going to do that how about we just drag out one of these um, you can drag from this window out and um, let me see what we have um, there's a whole bunch of them in the side there uh, let's see uh, I don't like any of these let me try a different set it was underneath brush libraries, decorative, banners and seals. Oh, no, definitely not that. Uh, not that. Where was that? Window. 
I swear there was. You can download a whole bunch off the internet. Scatter? What's that? No, that's ugly. That's ugly. That's ugly. Um, I don't know. You can drag these things out if you want. I can drag this out and put it on here. This might be a nice kind of at the top of my piece here. Maybe at the top like that. Uh, I know it's it's interfering with my font, but maybe in the corner. Maybe rotate it. Nice sort of. Oh, there we go. How about that? Kind of in the corner like that. You know, you put it on every corner, all four corners, right? You know. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Uh, I'm just saying is there's a whole bunch of decorative things you can add. In addition, you can make yourself a nice colored background if you want. You could make a new layer. What I would do is if I was going to make a background, I would probably make a new layer, call it background. And then I might move that down below it and then maybe um, put a rectangle in there. Um, a rectangle in there and then give that a color. Maybe you're back. Maybe you don't. You know, you don't want to work on white. Maybe you want to have a nice sort of ugly color like that, a little yellowish, like that. That might be kind of cool. Think about it. In the post, all the posters in this time were on that newsprint kind of ugly yellow paper, right? Oh, you can't really see, but I did put like a yellow kind of background or orangish kind of tan background there. Yeah, it doesn't print to the edge because the printer is not going to bleed to the edge. Yeah, I would stay at least a half inch in. It's going to quarter inch usually. So yeah, the printer is going to print and it's going to be about that much on the edge there. Okay, so yeah, keep in mind that's a good point. You'll your the printer is going to cut off about a quarter inch on the edge there. So yeah, try and keep everything inside. Um, don't put things all the way to the edge. Um, and then usually when I mount it, I'll cut the, I'll trim the edge off. Unless you want the white, the white might all around the edge might be something you want. Though, you know. Can you mount it on just a black board? What's that? You just mount it on a board. Yeah, just a black board. Yep. Yeah. And then. Um, a couple things I would do is um, if I was going to take this to a printer, um, I would save it in several different formats, probably PDF for sure. Uh, the other thing I would do is um, probably convert the text to um, maybe an object, right? Do you remember that? So, you know, one of the problems you have with going to have something done at a, at a separate location is they might not have the font. You've all probably opened up an Illustrator thing and had your pink font, the pink over top of your text because you didn't use the same font. Harry saw that today, didn't you? Yes. Okay, so ways to avoid font problems. Of course, you can save as, and well, I'm going to save this as an Illustrator file. That's fine. But if I go under File, oh, ooh, it's saving. Look at that guy go. It's saving. Yeah, I would probably change the, this before, um, maybe move this up just a hair. How do you change the text to an object? There you go. Oh, what's that? I'm going to do that. <laughs> so one thing you can do is go under File, Save As, and save a PDF. That usually um, works quite well, um, saving um, and not having font problems. But, um, you know... Um, and that tends to also have problems sometimes. So another, and then when you're saving as a PDF, here's a trick. If, it, if you're trying to email it to somebody and it's too big and you're having problems, because I, I have, I have a, 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 a client that works with my students sometimes. If you need a job, I have a, a wonderful woman that always needs help. Her name is, um, come to me. She has a website called Tookies. Um, where they and she she has um, women in in India that their husbands left them so there's single women in India sewing these uh, dishcloths and then she sells them here in the United States and so I, I usually have an illustrator student help her throughout the semester and she's always calling me for advice and one time she called me one time and she wasn't able to send her file over email because usually email has like a 20 megabyte limit and uh, one of the easiest ways to reduce the file size of a PDF is to uncheck this box that says preserve illustrator editing capabilities 
Now the problem is you won't be able to open this PDF in Illustrator and edit it, but it removes all the Illustrator crap out of it and makes it usually a quarter size smaller. It's usually one fourth what it, the original if it's something that's big and complex. So this option in the PDF, now you might want to save of course a PDF that, that is editable, but look it's it's taking a little while to save this. You know it's going to be a big file. There it is. Look at that. Ooh, I even got the wheel going there. Whoosh. But if I go under File, Save As, again, and I choose PDF, and I'm going to give this a 2, and I'm going to hit Save, and I'm going to uncheck this. Uncheck this for my second one. Uncheck that. Yeah, it's, it's giving you a message saying, hey, you're not going to be able to open that in Illustrator. Yeah, I know. Oh, still getting the wheel, the color wheel. Oh, didn't take very long to save, though. Did you notice that? If I go to my file now, wherever it went, somewhere on the desktop here, uh, you'll see that um, it was 159 megabytes. But after I checked that box, it went down to 78.7 megabytes, which is a pretty big file. Okay, so why is it so big? Well, all those bitmap or photos that I brought in from the internet were awful large, right? Remember I chose very, very high quality images? So that's still too big. What can I do? What can I do? Well, we're gonna go back. Here we go. We're gonna go back. Let's see if we can make it even smaller. So let's go under File, Save As again. Let's go to our PDF option again. Let's go to number three. We're gonna give it a third one. And I'm gonna hit Save. Again, I'm unpreserve that. Ah. Compression is a term here, compression. Compression is that you can downsample the bitmap images that you have included in your document. And right now it says do not downsample. We're going to change that to downsample, average downsample too. And right now we'll, we'll put it in uh, 120 PPI. So it's going to recompress the pictures, right? Right? Like you've, you've saved an image on your file in a JPEG format. You ever save a file in Photoshop and JPEG and it gives you a little slider option for quality, right? So what it's going to do is it's going to recompress your images down to a lower quality uh, to save space. Um, yeah, I guess we could go to JPEG. I'm going to say zip. I'm not sure which one would be smaller. You might want to try either one and see, you know. Uh, so then it automatically adjusted this to 180. We might even go down anything further. Let's go down to 100 and see what this happens. This goes to 150. I don't know. We'll see if this happens. And then um, that's about another thing. And um, so that would be the best thing. Try the down sample here. And let's save that. And let's see what that comes out to. Let's see if it did anything. Oh, it's only 1.8 megabytes now. Look at that. I could email that to my friend. Now, of course, they're, they're a little blurrier probably. They're probably not as sharp and clean, these images. But boy, if I was trying to squeeze that into something, I, and you can go and adjust those settings. But those are things you can do to make it smaller. The last thing you can do is if you're still having problems um, printing and stuff, is of course, select all the text. Make sure you unlock your layer that has locked on it. Select all the text itself and then go under type create outlines will convert it to an object. So all the text is now an object. Now of course you can't edit it or type it anymore, but convert it all to an object. Um, and now you don't, won't have any font problems at all because it's not a font anymore. It's just a plain object and then save that as an illustrator or, or PDF again. We can save that as a four. And uh, maybe we'll go back to, this is pretty low. Let's go back to 150 for that. Let's see what that does. 255, save as PDF. Or was that the default 150? I don't remember. Oh, this one's now 4.1 megabytes. Smaller, um, but probably better quality images here. A little bit. I don't know, you would have to try and adjust, but. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, the text is going to see it as an object. It'll be vector. It's just, yeah. So any questions? I guess you probably do. I don't know. Work on your thing. Uh -huh. Get from one column to the next with the text you want. Mm -hmm. Came to the bottom, you made it square. 
where you see that little X. You, yeah, you dragged it up here. No, no dragging. Just, okay. just move your cursor and click. I don't. It's not It's not text anymore. We just click, and it'll give you a new way of doing it. You just line up from the bottom of the first one to the top of the second. Yeah, that's that's showing you that it's wrapping. That's the flow line. It's flowing, showing you the flow from one to the other. And so, I mean, if I had more text, even I don't even know where my character window went. If I had more text, I lost my character window. Oh, here it is. We can make it bigger. And again, if you want your text, in, you can click on the little, and then go and see how the cursor changes, and then click, and it makes a new line. Okay, I'm going to stop talking. It's spring break. Um,